Hi, for this projection we're going to take an old map, it's a floor plan from a, from a building. Um, I found it on the internet, so it's not one of my schools, but the idea is we're going to make this skewed old plan and turn it into a vectorized uh, evacuation floor plan. So it won't be uh, accurate in the sense of measures and dimensions, but it, it, it will work just right, just fine to show people where they are and how to get out. Okay, so first things first, look, we're gonna try and take this as a model. So we'll have to straighten it out. First thing I'll do is turn on the grid, a grid, grid, view, show grid. Uh, I changed my default grid so it, it shows crosshairs and bigger distances in, instead of lines and I'm gonna add some some guides so we see where, where all the most important things are this will make it easier after a while okay maybe one more line here uh, doop. And I'm also going to change the colors a little bit so the contrast is a bit better. I'm going to use the levels tool for this. Okay. So now we have like our basic idea. What we're going to do now is, is, is transform it a little bit. So the horizontal lines actually become horizontal and the vertical lines actually become vertical. For this, I'll use the cage transform tool. I'll click on it and I'll draw a grid around everything that I want to keep. I'm gonna add plenty of dots. So this is something I think is pretty important don't uh, use enough dots because it will make it easier for you. I don't need this but I will keep this walk around line. Okay, closing it. And now he's gonna make some, some calculations. And now I can start doing some deformations. First I'm gonna start down here. I don't actually have to end up on those lines but I have to keep in mind that they are these are my parallel lines okay let's continue This one looks okay. We're gonna just try to get something reasonable. It doesn't have to be perfect, just quite reasonable is okay. For me, this is acceptable because it's a starting point. Now, a very important step, it's, it's saying it here, downstairs, press enter to commit transform. So I'm gonna enter and now it saves the transformation. Now I'm gonna save this, uh, actually I'm gonna export it as a, as a JPEG, but I'll rename it so I have my original. Well, whatever. 
typo just keep the standards so I don't care that much it's just for now and this is what I did with GIMP so GIMP is a bitmap, bitmap editing tool the current version is the version 2.8.14 I'm actually running a beta version so you'll see here this is uh, 2.9.1 but it's a unstable development release for GIMP I like to play with the most uh, recent versions so now for the next step I'm going to Inkscape. Inkscape Inkscape is a vector drawing program so in contrast to uh, GIMP which is a bitmap editing program Inkscape will do um, bit vectors so vectors will means you, you, you draw shapes and the shapes uh, are retained in the document. Um, Inkscape, uh, I'll import the picture we just uh, edited, so it was floor pan flixed. Open. I'll just leave the settings as they are because we're, we're not going to keep the picture. Now I'm going to open the layers tab. So you go to layer, layers, and I'm going to rename this one bitmap at the end we're going to delete it so not, not that important but I'm going to make it a little bit more transparent I'm going to zoom this resize it a bit so it fits on the page okay a little bit less transparent a bit more opaque okay I'm going to lock this layer, I'm going to add a layer above, I'm going to call it Vector. Okay, and this is where I'm going to be making my drawings. So what, I'm going, what am I going to do here? Just as I did in GIMP, but now it's more important, I'm going to put some helping lines for myself, some guides. and I'm gonna mark the most important lines for me this is enough <coughs> and now I'm just gonna start drawing I'm gonna use the, the basic tool I'm just gonna going to follow the corners of the building okay probably in your scenario you will have like a very thin line so if you double click here in the bottom you get a fill in stroke and you'll probably have a stroke width of one so what what, what can you do just ch ch change this for this one item so I, I used uh, 10 and now I'm gonna save the change the defaults I'm gonna click up here and the preference come up for the pen and I'm gonna take these from the selection so you could change the color or the stroke th thickness to uh, width to eight or six or seven. You could change the, the, the preferences for colors for filling, but I'm not going to touch it. And now every line line I draw will uh, have this these settings. So now I'm going to add. I'm going to zoom in a little bit, and I'm going to draw extra lines. So if if I press Control, my line uh, moves at an angle of per 15 degrees this is really easy to make horizontal lines enter and I'm done enter and I'm done enter and I'm done actually I don't need that okay This is okay for now. So I have all, all my walls in this piece of the building. So I'm going to add this building. And look here, I'm going to do a trick because I do like the symmetry of this building. You have this really nice symmetrical shape here. How I'm going to how, how I'm going to emulate this? I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So I'm going to draw something like this.
And now I'm going to duplicate it, Control D for duplicate. I'm going to flip horizontally. And I'm going to move it a bit. So let's see how okay, where the boundary is. Now I'm going to take these two. And I'm going to the path union. And you have this. Now I know this is symmetrical. I'm going to take these two. I'm going to align them according to the last selected. Up. Now I, s I know this one is nice in the middle. And now I'm going to take these two and make another union. And I have my shape. See, it's easy as uh, as this. Next thing, we'll go we're going to have to add doors and windows. So what's the typical shape for a door? In the old uh, build, uh, plans, we had like openings. I'm assuming there are doors here. And if you know the building, obviously you have an advantage. So by default, it shows something like this, a circle, full circle. So I'm gonna, if again with control, I move per 15 degrees angles, make a quarter of a door. And for this one, I'll decrease the stroke style stroke width to five pixels so I have like a thinner door element the door is here so I'm gonna move this with V you can flip it vertically with H you can flip it horizontally this is really handy so if you know where the doors are you can easily draw them yourself and now I'm just gonna duplicate this one duplicate uh, voila here you go or maybe it's uh, actually I'm going to reduplicate it and I'm moving it horizontally and when I press control this stays nicely on the same horizontal line and I have my two doors nicely in the same spot I'm gonna add this one here and I'm gonna oops yeah whatever I'm gonna simplify a little bit I'm gonna cheat and we're gonna keep on adding doors duplicate we have a door here have a door here have a door here Okay, and just for the fantasy, because we, we have a fire exit here. Okay. So now every door has its exit and its entry. Okay. Now here we have a double door, so I'm gonna add this one. Group these two and scale it a little bit. Okay, so here we have a double door. Here we have a double door too. And now, as you see here, you want to take away a piece of this wall. So I'm going to take my tool and I'm going to split this node. I have like the staircase here I'll just make I'll take in the easy road here I'll just draw a line but way too thick of course just maybe three pixels thick yeah okay I'm gonna make a bunch of them I didn't really count them you could count the stairs I put one here I'll just put it even 
where I wanted the stairs to end select them all and with the align and distribute tool I'm gonna split them okay this looks like a nice staircase to me if it's too too wide I'm gonna add a few and redo it okay this is better I'm gonna duplicate this And I'm gonna move them here because there's another staircase here. <laughs> now we have some windows here. Huh? For windows, I'm gonna take draw a rectangle. gonna take the same settings as the the doors five pixels and now a really cool trick here these old buildings right they have like my my window is way too wide I'm gonna shallow it a little bit okay Just gonna put them on side, don't worry about the details now. And these nice historical buildings, they always had a habit of creating equal distances between the windows. It's a good habit. I, modern buildings also tend to do this, so I'm gonna use this feature and I'm gonna apply it here. Okay, so here's one where it's not, doesn't work out that well so I'm gonna do it again and my windows end up just right so now I have my basic floor plan oh, so what happened here? move it back to, to this corner there you go uh, okay, let's see, we can get out here, we can get out here Oops, we don't have doors here yet, so I'm gonna duplicate this and turn it into turn it here. It's just the doors go this way. I won't bother with all the other windows. You, you could easily copy them to the other side. Not going to, not going to do that. You, you got the picture. Um, let's see how this works out. If I hide the bitmap, okay, this is starting to get something, get somewhere. I'm also going to hide my oops guides. Guides, where are you? Okay, okay, now, okay, this looks just great for me. Now, without what I tend to do is get rid of this bitmap, by bitmap, and I'm going to add some new layers. So every every additional information comes on a new layer. So if I said say classrooms of class rooms, okay, I would say evacuation icons. But I'm gonna lock this one so I can't mess up the basic plan anymore. So now I can say this is the kitchen. I like this font a lot. I'm gonna stick size 16, okay. And now I could just give these things names, uh, science lab, going to condensed, 18, ouch, put my browser there. Uh, I think if you change the settings now, And 
let's start typing. No, I don't know how it go. Maybe let's go to my preferences. So I don't want to change this every every time. Text. Okay, so I could make a selection. see what happens now if I say uh, lab storage okay this works out just great math class oh I like this to land centered I don't I know it doesn't make sense just giving the things a name I'm I like to have these aligned a bit so shift control a for align I'm gonna align them okay right now just for the ease okay I'm not going to continue with this. I'm going to always. I I made a poo poo. I put the label, so I'm going to select all, cut it, and now this is really the tricky part. If just paste, they won't be in place. But if you edit paste in place, Control Alt V, they're on the same spot again. This is like a really interesting trick. Don't forget this. And then for for the evacuation icon, so this one is done too. Now I'm gonna uh, use something I already made in my previous work uh, tutorial. So I'm gonna go to my symbol libraries, and I have this really simple library with evacuation icons, which tells me I have like a fire extinguisher in my science lab. Of course, I have the normal exit is this way. We have an, uh, an emergency exit that way. Okay, let's. The normal exit is this way. This is the tricky part here because the normal exit is that way. <coughs> <coughs> this is a normal exit, but it doesn't follow the rules, so I'm going to change this icon. And this way, like this, you can easily. Add your icons wherever you want. So in the kitchen we have a fire blanket. Oops. And we have another fire extinguisher, just a powder extinguisher here. And you can continue like this. You you got the picture. Just save it, save as desktop floor plan. And you have your <coughs> perfect uh, floor plan. <coughs> Excuse me, just for the fun of it, I'm gonna put the original one, original one next to it. So you see what we came from and where we went to voila that's it for today I hope you you learned something
have fun and uh, use open source it's magic bye